I'm screaming from the rooftop saying, you might be cynical, you might think you don't understand it, you might think you can't afford to play in this, but you have to listen because this is the opportunity. Every single rich person understands how to benefit from the system. Hold assets, not a currency. If you hold a thousand Bitcoin, you hold 1,000 of a possible 21 million forever, right? You have a guaranteed fraction of the total money supply. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know you've got something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today, let's live your best believe life and learn why Bitcoin will always crush the other investments. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with idea number one. Don't hold the dollar with Anthony Pompliano. If I denominate my life in dollars and let's say I buy a loaf of bread today and it's two dollars, five or ten years from now, that loaf of bread may cost me three, four, five dollars, depending on the rate of inflation. If I denominate my life in Bitcoin, and today let's say that it cost me one Bitcoin for a loaf of bread. In the future, it will cost me less than one Bitcoin. So it'll actually become cheaper for me to buy because every asset, when you think of price, it's denominated in a currency. So a stock, right? When I, when I ask you, what is Amazon stock price? You're telling me one Amazon share over how many US dollars? And that's how we get to the actual value. And so when you start to think about that, look at the stock market. The stock market from 1971 to today is up and to the right. It's a perfect 45 degree angle. Oh God, I know what you're about to say. When you denominate it in gold, it's down That's since nuts. 1971. If you denominate it in Bitcoin since 2009, uh, 2010, it has crashed aggressively. Bitcoin has been the best performing asset, but that's because it's denominated in dollars. And so ultimately what we're watching is we're watching an entire generation of people wake up to this fiat currency kind of fiasco. Um, and there's a famous, uh, I think it's Henry Ford quote where he said, you know, if people understood how money worked, there would be riots in the street before morning. And it's simply, again, That's it goes so back good. to that education gap. And so the 55% of people who hold investable assets, whether they understand why or not, they're actually benefiting from this. And so it's important to remember that I don't think there are um, nefarious or malicious intentions or, you know, let's screw people at the bottom of the totem pole. In fact, sometimes it's actually the exact opposite. Uh, but the system is working as designed. It's a feature, not a bug. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important to understand is because the system is not going to change, right? You and I are not gonna be able to convince anybody to do anything different. They're gonna do what they're gonna do because that's the way the system is built. But what you can do is you can change the way that you're positioned. So you have a, a choice. I can either suffer at the hands of this system or I can flip around to the other side of the table and I can benefit from the system. Every single rich person understands how to benefit from the system. Hold assets, not a currency. Don't hold the dollar, instead hold the assets. Idea number two, analyze all options with Gary Vaynerchuk. We first heard about Bitcoin, didn't really get it, or it didn't really click, then it was Ethereum. Now I have to ask, do you think of yourself as an Ethereum, I might say maxi, that's a term in the industry, Ethereum maximalist. They say, forget Bitcoin, all the potential for business applications is Ethereum, or have you now gone back and do you also own Bitcoin? I bought Bitcoin back then, so that did really well. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a big believer in and. I'm, I think the worst, one of the worst characteristics in the crypto landscape right now is people buying things and then all of their opinions are grounded in their own self-financial interests. That's how you have a bad reputation. That's how you are not historically correct. This is gonna be a game of and. I, back to December, how I use it, I can't wait to go very deep into Solana this December holiday season to understand what I think in comparison to Immutable X and Layer 2 versus a ETH mainnet. No, I think it's insane to think this is a zero-sum game. I think that there will be many platforms, probably, I have a much better understanding of the human psychology around NFTs than I do around the financial aspect of coins. So I don't, as you probably know, because I know you watch the space carefully, I don't talk a lot about Bitcoin or the alternative currencies because I really don't understand that game. I very much understand why people wear Nikes 
Rolexes, buy Mercedes Benz, communication, human behavior, and that's why I'm so very focused on NFTs because I think they represent social communication in a way that other things come natural to me and that's where my focus is. Well, and really now crypto punks arguably becoming, some might say bored apes, I mean pick your collection, the example of those highest you know, tier in the NFT world. But yeah. that's gonna keep changing, I mean. Yeah, and I think some, like my bet is that what I bet on, because I bought a bunch of crypto punks and I, and I believe it even more now watching this year play out, some things will be Tiffany's like locked and loaded for hundreds of years. X copy, the artist, shows all the nuances of potentially becoming a Warhol or a Banksy or a Pollock. Um, so somebody's gonna win that game. Bored Ape, V Friends, Cool Cats, I think a lot of those brands are gonna play the brand game. So Supreme is hot for seven years, but it's hard to be hot for 50 years, yep. right? So there's gonna be a classics, and there's gonna be the hot brand, wow. and there's a lot to think through, um, and I'm spending a lot of time on it. Idea number three, take the opportunity with Raul Paul. The internet from 1990 to 2000 grew at 63% a year. That was the fastest adoption of any technology in all recorded history. Prior to that, mobile phones was the other one. But what happens is the internet technology and the mobile phone technology allows for these networks to be built. And once that network's in place, it's faster to build the net, next network. So in India, for example, they've just basically given out free data to every mobile phone in India. So guess what? Uh, da data usage is the highest in the world. Mm. And so their internet scaling becomes faster. So this, so the internet was huge, as we all know, and it remains huge. So at 63% a year, it then flattened out over time as more and more people got adopted. So at 1997, it was growing at 63% a year, and there was 140 million users of the internet. In 2021, there are 140 million crypto users, and it's growing at 113% a year, Jesus. double the speed. Now, this is where humans struggle, <laughs> linear numbers and exponential numbers. Because it's exponential, it means that growing at 113% a year, we're going to go from 140 million people to a billion people by 2024. Jesus Christ. I mean, so, 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 so when you go back and what, how are you introduced all of this? So if you know that something is being adopted at this speed and it's a network of money at its core and you can buy an infinitesimal fraction of it so everybody can buy 10% of their net worth then everybody who takes this opportunity will probably have the biggest opportunity in history to make money i did a piece that was probably the most viewed piece i've ever done on youtube it was like i don't know 2 million 2 or 3 million views called the retirement crisis and it resonated because I, I kind of showed how people, people haven't seen it, check it out on YouTube. It's well worth your time. And it's a long time ago. It predicts a lot of what's going on now. And um, the point being is that there's a bunch of retirees, the baby boomers, and they've kind of screwed it all up because they've got all the debt. Um, they've got too much equity exposure. It's really hard for them to retire. This is why the Federal Reserve don't like equities going down because you've got this richest group on earth who are kind of stuck. They never got enough money to retire on. But I want to look through the eyes of the millennials. So they are at 32 years old. At the same age, their parents at 32, the baby boomers, had all-time cheap valuations of equities, all-time cheap bonds, all-time cheap credit, all-time cheap property. Right. So they couldn't help but make money. They kind of screwed it up because they actually ended up going into debt as well. But they couldn't help but make money. So then the millennials had the opposite, all-time record valuations equities, all-time record valuation for bonds, all-time record credit, all-time record highs in property. So I'm like, these guys are screwed unless something else comes along. And that thing is crypto. Because the future expected return of crypto, it's been growing at 213% a year in returns. I, that's how much it makes, even though it's very volatile. Sometimes it's down 70%. Over time, you're making 213% a year. It has grown as an asset. It's gone up, I think it's 2 million percent since inception. No other asset in all recorded history has ever done this. And we haven't even started. I still think there's probably another 100x from here. Not even the baby boomers got given that. 
the S and P didn't go up a hundred x since 1980. So this is the magnitude of what's there. So I'm screaming from the rooftop saying, "You might be cynical. You might think you don't understand it. You might think you can't afford to play in this, but you have to listen because this is the opportunity. You can't come back to me in ten years' time and say." Well, we missed all of that. All the rich people got richer. No, you, I, everybody else is saying now is your time. Don't be irresponsible. You know, dollar cost average. Do all the right things. But here is your opportunity. This is the biggest opportunity I've ever seen, and I'm going to take advantage of it. And so should everybody else. This is not rich or poor. This is an every person opportunity, and we've never had this before ever. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, Video absolutely for free. There's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Idea number four: See it as an asset with Michael Saylor. Because people call it a cryptocurrency, then it lends itself to a shallow criticism that it's not good as a currency because the central banks will ban it, and because the tax treatment is poor, and because the transaction rate is low. But Again, those are all red herrings. It's not a currency, nor does it need to be a currency, right? Any anybody thinking about it for even a few seconds realizes that if there's a taxable event every time I transfer it to you, mm. it can't be a currency. So right. it's it's so no, it's not a currency. It's an asset, and if you think of it as an asset, it's very helpful because then you realize it's not competing with the dollar and the euro. It's competing with gold and silver. Hmm. It's competing with bearer instruments, uh, and and to a certain degree, it's competing with bonds as a store of value, and it's competing with ETFs like the S and P 500 index as a store of value. And once you understand it that way, then you're not so afraid anymore, because you understand the regulatory framework that comes to Bitcoin is the same regulatory framework that comes to gold, silver, and S and P 500 indexes. It's just know your customer, anti money laundering regulations. And if you're if you're afraid to buy Bitcoin because you're afraid of regulation, you shouldn't be, because if it is regulated para pursu or at, at parity with these other assets. It will create um, it'll create a, a avalanche of institutional money flow into the asset class because it'll simply normalize the treatment in the Western world. The IRS in 2014 deemed it to be property. Right. And but I mean, as if property, they... it means that it means that when you transfer it, you owe a capital gains tax. So exactly. there is like zero chance the IRS is going to reverse that. It is property. It's not a currency. Idea number five, hold inviolable property with Robert Breedlove. Bitcoin is the first permanent implementation of this principle we've been refining throughout human history of inviolable property. It actually cannot be violated in any way. No one can produce more than 21 million Bitcoin. So it's, and I've argued this in some of my writing that although it's an invention, We've actually discovered something with Bitcoin. We've discovered absolute scarcity for money. So if we're back to those five properties of money in terms of scarcity, Bitcoin is absolute. It's not relative, right? It doesn't change. We know with, you know, nothing's, um, people argue with me about this. It's not absolute. Everything's probabilistic. True. Uh, Bitcoin has proven itself over 13 years of flawless operation that it does two things essentially perfectly, which are turn out a block on uh, one block of transactions on average every 10 minutes and adhere to a supply cap of 21 million. So it's the first fixed supply money there has ever been. And I don't think you can recreate that because by definition, money is a centripetal network effect. So it, we tend towards one. So for the same reasons we had one analog gold, we're likely only to have one digital gold 
Um, this, so your property rights cannot be violated by inflation because no one can change the supply cap. If you hold a thousand Bitcoin, you hold 1,000 of a possible 21 million forever, right? You have a guaranteed fraction of the total money supply. You cannot get that level of assurance with any other asset in the world. Full stop. Doesn't exist. Even with gold, you can hold all the physical gold you want. You're still not immune to uh, some technological breakthrough. We figured out figured out how to produce gold in the lab very cheaply. We mine an asteroid. We mine the ocean floor. We find a new South American bonanza. Whatever. You're not immune to any of that. But with Bitcoin, and again, it's a bit of a bet because it's only 13 years in, but it's done these things perfectly so far. If it continues to do what it's been doing for 13 years, you have a guaranteed fraction of the total money supply. So you have an inviolable property right. Idea number six, invest now with Robert Kiyosaki. In December, you called that Bitcoin will hit 50K in early 2021. And you were correct. You even tweeted it. Let's read that tweet. Glad I bought Bitcoin. Next stop 50K. Wall of institutional money coming 2021. Buy below 20K. If you missed Bitcoin by silver, silver set to move due to AOC's Green New Deal. America in trouble. Future bright for gold, silver, Bitcoin and entrepreneurs. All right, let's break down that advice there, Robert. You said buy below 20K if you missed it by silver. OK, so now that Bitcoin has hit a record high of over 61K and is now in the high 50K range, is it too late to get into Bitcoin? Where do you see it going? That's a very good question because it's always the entry point. Like I bought Bitcoin at 9,000 and I thought I was being fleeced. But the reason I bought it at nine was because uh, COVID shut down the world economy. So I thought it was pretty, when they started printing, so I bought Bitcoin at nine. I wish I had bought it at 10 cents, like a lot of people did. But now I look like a genius because today it's around 55,000. This is uh, what, April, 2021. And I think it's gonna go to 1.2 million in five more years. And idea number seven, the last one before some very special bonus clips is Save in the Bank with Kathy Wood. What is the long-term play when it comes to something like cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin? So Bitcoin specifically, um, uh, we, we got involved when it was a $6 billion market cap. And here's Art Laffer again in, in my life and in Ark's life. Um, uh, it was a $6 billion cap then. Now it's over a trillion, which is, but we were asking the question, this was 2015, could Bitcoin serve the three roles of money? And we came to the conclusion that it was possible. Art Laffer collaborated. He tore our original paper up. And as we were going through it, I he said, this is the first, this is the rules-based monetary system I've been waiting for since uh, we left the gold exchange standard, 71, 1971. Right. And I said to him, oh, how big could this be? And he said, well, how big is the US monetary base? And back then, remember, this is a $6 billion cap. Back then, it was a $4.5 trillion monetary base. Today, we're at $8.5 trillion. Uh, and, and Bitcoin's at $1 trillion. And that's, uh, that's just one of its roles, one of its roles. I think the See, most fascinating thing that's happening is in El Salvador. Have you heard they deemed Bitcoin, the president who right. tweets every day, deemed Bitcoin legal tender, and it was a Bloomberg quiz question. Okay. We do it every week. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> and sent a Chivo wallet uh, to every, everyone uh, in the population eligible, so 4 million. 3 million, it had $30 worth of Bitcoin in it. 3 million have, t have downloaded it. Only 1.2 million in that country uh, have a banking relationship. So this is the new bank, digital wallets. And it's going to be true in this country. It's going to be true around the world. I see the blockchain as something that is going to change the world and that as a business owner, I really better understand that. And then as I came to understand it, I realized that it plugged in perfectly with the kind of things that I need to do in order to build the next Disney. So I had to learn about this technology. Now, whenever you're learning about a technology, you start with a lexicon. So you're gonna fumble around. So you're gonna go and you're gonna type into YouTube whatever word you know, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, NFTs, whatever is that starting point that you're at. 
Then as you get in, you're going to begin to encounter the language. So you want to start learning the terms. The next thing is that you're going to start to figure out who the different players are in the space. And then once you figure out who the players are, you're gonna go deep down the rabbit hole of actually gaining that expertise, okay? So it starts with words, lexicon. Then it goes to influencers. And then finally it goes to the actual true understanding that's gonna come over time. And you need to start using it. Now, the fastest way to learn about cryptocurrency is to go invest in some. Again, this is not financial advice, and if I haven't already said this, let me tell you, when it comes to cryptocurrency, which is an extremely volatile asset, the only thing more volatile than cryptocurrency is NFTs. NFTs are like the king of volatility, of lack of uh, liquidity, right? You can get your money tied up in an NFT and never be able to get it out. So you need to be very thoughtful that the utility of that thing is worth the money that you're paying for it. Okay, that's incredibly important. All right, so the fastest way to learn about cryptocurrency is to go buy some, but you're not going to invest any money that you can't afford to lose, okay? Say that again. You're not going to invest any money that you can't afford to lose. The first thing I would do and did is go to Coinbase. It's very easy. It's one of many. There are many that you can do, but speaking from experience, I went to Coinbase. It was very easy for me to set up an account. There's something called KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. So they're going to ask, it's anti-money laundering. They're gonna ask you a lot of questions. They're probably gonna make you send in, if I remember right, you have to photocopy both sides of your driver's license and send that in. Uh, they're going to encourage you to connect your bank account. There are other ways that you can do it. I ended up um, treating it like an ACH wire. So I wasn't in the beginning days, I was not comfortable connecting my bank account. And so I gave them my routing number and my account number um, so that I could ACH money back and forth. Um, so follow your comfort level, only do what you understand and only do what you're comfortable with. Once you have a Coinbase account, then you can trade your fiat currency, just your US dollars, for the cryptocurrency of your choice. Again, only invest in the ones that you understand and believe have utility. For me, I think the very first thing that I bought was Bitcoin. The next thing that I bought was um, Ethereum. And then the third thing that I bought, again, this is all based on my understanding of the technology was something called Chainlink. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want proof that Bitcoin will become even more valuable, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. If you pull in your time frame to less than a year, less than 12 months, and you and you consider, you know, regulatory uncertainty and market liquidity crisis, like just about anything can happen.